is MJ and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make a mosaic style basket working in the round. So you'll need a few things for this design. If you want to add the nice jute twine like I've done to the top, you're going to need some of this cord here to complete your basket. You can purchase this at a craft store, dollar store, Walmart, or even on Amazon. I'll be using Brava worsted weight for this project. Now you will be using two strands held together. So that makes a super bulky weight and that will just help give your basket a little bit more firmness. It will just stand up a little bit better. So I'm using Brava worsted weight in brindle and white and I'm gonna be holding together two strands. So the basket I'm showing you here is done in dove heather. The hook size that I'll be using is a six millimeter or a J size crochet hook. And this is my Furls Odyssey hook. You'll need a pair of scissors and also a yarn needle, needle for bulky yarn. So to begin, I'm gonna be start the bottom of the basket in my color B, which is brindle for this basket. And you just wanna find your center pulls Sometimes it does not come out easy. The magic ring is the technique we'll be using to start the basket. So in order to do that, we're gonna take the yarn, we have the two strands held together and we're gonna wrap it around our index finger three times. Take the hook and slide it through. All of those loops on your finger. If you can't get it through, you can just help it along. So you're gonna grab those first two loops and pull them through and then we'll chain two to get that loop secured. Now we're going to work half double crochets in the ring. Our pattern is worked in multiples of six for this mosaic crochet pattern so I'm going to work start all of the size baskets with 12. So we're gonna work half double crochets. So I'm working 12 half double crochets in the ring. So we're yarning over, going through the ring, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And we're gonna do a total of 12. So I have my 12 in the ring. So now what we're gonna do is move those stitches out of the way because we want to see this here. We're going to take our tail. You're going to start pulling it in. You're going to notice that two loops start pulling in because we have two strands and two of them aren't going to pull in. So you want to really identify the two loops that have started to pull in and then you're going to find them. Grab them with your finger you're going to pull them and then you can see the other two loops there. It's going to pull them in tight. Okay, because so, we know the tail is going to pull these two. So that's pulled in tight. So now we take our tail and just pull. And we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet to join. We're going to go under both those loops. Pull through. And there we've started the bottom of our basket. So now for round two, we're gonna chain one. We're starting to work in single crochets now throughout. And we're gonna work two single crochet in every stitch around. So right in that first stitch, our chain one is not counting as a stitch. So we do two in the first. and two single crochet in each. So we'll be increasing from 12 stitches to 24 stitches. So I'm gonna complete two in each around. And now we'll slip stitch in the top of the first single crochet to join. And we'll chain one and for our third round, we'll work just one single crochet in every stitch around. Four, 
for a total of 24 stitches. And when you complete that round, we'll slip stitch in the first single crochet to join, chain one, and now we're doing another increase. We'll work one single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So our repeat pattern is one in the next and then two in the next. One in the next and then two in the next. So each increase round will then go up by 12 stitches. So I'm gonna complete working my increases around and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so we've now increased to 36 stitches. We'll slip stitch to join. chain one and then we'll work only one single crochet in every stitch around and this is how we're going to continue increasing so we'll do an increase round and then we'll do a non-increase round and it will keep the basket fairly flattened out and increasing in a nice pattern so I'll now work one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 36 stitches Okay, and we'll slip stitch to join, chain one, and now we're doing another increase round. So now, instead of doing one stitch and then doing two stitch, two stitches, we're going to do one and one and then two. And this is how the increase pattern continues. So each time we do an increase round, we'll add one more stitch before we do two. Okay, so we'll do one in the first one in the next and then we'll do two so the next increase we'll do three before we do two and so on and that's how we keep this pattern increasing and increasing by 12 every time so one two and then we add two one in the next one in the next and then two so now we'll be increasing to 48 stitches, increasing by another 12. So I am going to complete my increases all the way around. And then I'll meet you up again at the end. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. Now we'll slip stitch to join. Chain one and I'll work. So I'm going to work here another round of just single crochet so work single crochet in every stitch around and then I'm going to do one more increase to bring me up to 60 stitches so I've worked all the way around I've slip stitched and chained one and now we're on to our final increase so we're going to work one in the first one in the next one in the next and then two in the next. So this is our repeat. We're working one, two, three single crochets, and then we're working two. And I'm gonna work that all the way around and then I'll be up to 60 stitches. Now I've worked all the way around. I'll slip stitch to join. My increases are complete. I'm going to chain one. And now we're going to work in the back loops only. So we're just basically getting into now setting up to do our mosaic. The back loop is going to kind of give us that edge here that you can see so that our basket sits nicely. So in every stitch around, make sure that you have 60 stitches. This is where it's really important once we get into our pattern that we have that multiple of 6 or 12. 
so that our pattern comes out perfectly. So just count as you work around. Okay, so now I've worked all the way around. We're going to change color when we slip stitch. So we're gonna go through the back loop only here of that first single crochet. Now we're gonna drop off the brown color. We're gonna bring in our color A. So color B is dropped. We're gonna bring in color A now. And this is now the first line of our chart. You wanna make sure you pull the tails. You want that join really tight. We're gonna chain one and I'm just gonna pull my chart here. You can see. So now we're working row one of the chart, which we're just going to be working um, white stitches all the way around, single crochets in the back loop only. So in the first stitch, the back loop of every stitch around. What's really great about working in the round is that we can drop and pick up as we go. So very limited tails to weave. <clears throat> Just really those starting tails. So I'm going to work this all the way around and then I'll meet you up. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. So now what I like to do when I'm changing back and forth, I like to keep my white my color a to one side and my b to another side just so we don't get tangled as we go and we'll change color with the slip stitch again so we're slip stitching into the back loop only okay so i'm dropping off my color a and we're just going to leave it there we're picking back up color b so we're going to pull through with color b we're gonna pull to make that nice and tight. Really important for a nice clean line. Okay, and now our next round will be worked all in our color B, okay? So, because we don't start dropping down double crochets until the third round. So this one is simple. <clears throat> We're just gonna chain one and work one single crochet in the back loop of every stitch around. So now let me show you exactly what I mean. So we're gonna slip stitch the back loop only of the first and we're gonna change color. Round three is color A. Pull through, make sure that we tighten everything up. Okay, so let's take a look at the chart and how you're gonna read it for creating your mosaic pattern. So now we're going on to row three. So when you're looking at your boxes, we're either looking at whether the box is empty or whether the box has an X. So we've already done one and two, and as you can see, we didn't change color when you see the color. The color change happens when we do a drop down double that covers up the color of this row. So you're never changing color throughout a row. We work each row in either A or B. So we alternate A, B, A, B. So when we're looking here, you can see the first two, we're gonna work a single crochet in the back loop only, and then we work a drop down double crochet. So we're dropping down two rows below, working in the front loop of row or round one. Then we do two in the back loop, and then we do a drop down, two in the back loop, and a drop down, and so on. So now I'm gonna show you how to work round three. Okay, so I've slip stitched into the back loop of our first stitch. I'm gonna chain one, and if we look again at the chart, we're going into the back loop of the first two. 
back loop, back loop, and then the next stitch you can see here is the front loop, two rows below, and we're going to do a drop down double crochet into that. Then we'll work in the back loop the next two. So the pattern also will just repeat itself around. So now we'll skip one, two, and then we're doing a drop down in the next. So that pattern now just repeats itself. So a single in the back loop of the next two, one, two, and then dropping down, doing a drop down double in the next. And just repeat this all the way around. Okay, so I'm coming all the way around, and if we look at, we're ending here with a drop down, okay? And now we'll slip stitch in the first to join. Keep the white to the one side. Make sure you pull those tight, chain one. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we're doing for the next round. So we're starting with a drop down. One, two, three, drop down, single drop down, and then we have three in between. So this is sort of our pattern with three, pattern three. So we're gonna start with a drop down. Okay, so it's kind of hard to get into it there. It's a little hidden. And then we'll work one, two, three, and then we're gonna do a drop down. And as you can see, if you look at the chart, these drop downs are coming around this double drop down. So that kind of helps you to eyeball it. So here's this drop down and we're doing a drop down beside it. Single crochet in the back loop above it. And then a drop down around it. So those drop downs are going between and now the next one, the next section, we have three singles in the back loop. So one, two, three, and then we're doing the drop downs on either side of this one. So once you sort of understand how the pattern works, it will help you to make sure you're getting your stitches put in the right places. Otherwise you can easily get off track. And then three again, and just repeat this pattern now all the way around and I will meet you at the end to make sure you end it correctly. Okay, so I'm coming to the end. We're gonna have a drop down and then a single. So a drop down. And a single. And then that creates this pattern so that it's looking seamless. You should, it look, should look completely seamless so you can hardly even tell there's a join. So we're gonna slip stitch to join. Okay, pull everything tight, chain one. Okay, and now we're doing round five. Okay, so round five is gonna start with a single, then we have a drop down, single drop down. We're doing three again. And then a drop down, single drop down, three, and so on. So this time, the single is going over top of that drop down. Then we're doing a drop down here. Single in the back loop will be above 
that drop down and then a drop down in the next. Okay, and then over these next three, there'll be single crochet in the back loop. And then when you get to the next section where we have the three loops here, that's where the next pattern goes. So drop down. I always like to really visualize where the pattern is going. So when I'm working throughout the round, I do not get off track. Okay, and then I know for the next three, single crochets in the back loop. And then you should be to those next three loops. So just repeat that around. Okay, so this is how we're ending now. We had our pattern here and then we're ending with two singles. Everything's working out perfectly. If you don't end correctly, you definitely want to go back and check your pattern. So we're going to slip stitch. Tighten everything up good. Chain one. Now let's take a look at how our round six is going to go. So we're doing two a drop down, two, a drop down, two, a drop down, two, a drop down, across. So this is an easy one to memorize. So in the first, in the next, now our drop down's going in that little loop down here all by itself. And two, one, two and then this time the loop is going in between the three because it's making sort of the triangle shape we're going for so you can easily eyeball those around you're doing a drop down here and you're doing a drop down in the middle so just repeat that all the way around Okay, and we're ending with a drop down in the last stitch. Slip stitch to join. Chain one, and let's take a look at round seven. Seven starts with a drop down. One, two, three drop down, single drop down, one, two, three, drop down, single drop down. So this time we're starting with the drop down. Okay, so here we're going right down here. And one, two, three, and then our drop downs are going to go on either side of this double. And then one. Right, and so you can see how that's going into the diamond shape. And here's the next drop down, so our drop downs are on either side. So I'm just going to complete that now all the way around. And now we're ending with the drop down and then a single in the back loop. 
slip stitch to join. Okay, so I've slip stitched to join. And for round eight, you can see here it's a repeat of round five, except we're working in B. So we're gonna do a single, drop down, single, drop down, and then three in between, drop down, single, drop down, and so on. So a single in that first stitch, which is the drop down, then one, two, whoops. So a single in the first, let me relook at my pattern. <laughs> and then it is a drop down, single, drop down. So this time, every time we get to the three, where you see the three B loops, that's when we do our pattern. So we have three in between, one, two, three, and then we do our drop down, single, drop down. Okay, and I'm just gonna repeat that all the way around. Okay, worked all the way around. We'll slip stitch to join, changing color. Pull that tight, chain one. And now we're on to round nine. Nine, you can just look down as a repeat again of three. So we're doing two, a drop down, two, a drop down, two, a drop down, etc. So as you can see, the pattern repeats itself a lot, making it really easy to work through. So we're doing one, two, and then our drop downs going between those two doubles. One, two, and then the drop down's going in the center of those three loops. One, two, and then it's going in the center. So you can see we've made our triangle, and then this is the little piece that goes in between the bigger triangles. So we know our patterns come in together nice. So I'm just going to repeat working this all the way around. Okay, I'm just slip stitching now to join. Chain one. And now we're on to round 10. Round 10 is a repeat of round five. So one drop down, single, drop down, three in between, drop down, single, drop down. So let's get started with it. So one in the first, and now we're doing our drop down, single in the back loop, and our drop down. And you can see here in the brown, you can kind of see our shape coming together. So then we do three, one, two, three. And our drop downs are being worked right over top of these ones. So drop down, single, and drop down. So I'll repeat that all the way around. Okay, so I've already slip stitched. We're on to round 11. So we're starting round 11 with a drop down, then we're doing three, and then a drop down, single drop down. And we're going up to round 14. That's the end of the repeat, and I really wanna take my basket that high at least. So I'm just gonna keep working 
So we've got four more rounds to go here. So we're starting out with a drop down. We're going down. Okay, like see that one's always a little harder to get into. And then three, one, two, three. And then you can see we've got the three here. So we're going drop down. Single. Drop down. And then three. One, two, three. So I'm just going to complete this all the way around. Okay, so for now for round 12, we're going to work two and then a drop down, two and a drop down, two and a drop down. So one, two, and a drop down. So now we have our shape here, we're going in between. One, two, and then a drop down, that little loop all by itself there. One, two, and then a drop down to finish our shape. So I'm just going to repeat that all the way around. So you can see how well this is all blending our join. Just slip stitching here. Make sure every time you're pulling that nice and tight. So now we are on to round 13. Round 13 will be one drop down, single drop down, and then our three in between. So one, drop down, single, drop down, and then we're doing three. So one, two, three. Drop down, single, and drop down. Okay, and I'll repeat that all the way around. Okay, so now I'm on to round 14. This is the final round of the repeat, although we do want the pattern to end the same as the same as it began so we will do one more but 14 is the last round of the repeat so it begins with a drop down then three and then we have our drop down single drop down with three in between so we're starting by dropping down and then we're working three One, two, three. We come to our three here, so we do our drop down, single, drop down, and then we do three. So I'm going to repeat this all the way around. Okay, so I finished the repeat. So now I'm going to do round 15 here, which is actually just round three. So our repeat goes from three to 14. So we'll do two single, a drop down, two single, a drop down. Really simple. And then that's just going to make this finish off with the white like we started. So a single in the first two and then a drop down and you can see that that completes our diamond. So we have one full diamond. Now I think this one's going to end up being a bit tall for my plant, but that's okay. This is 
the size that I think looks good so that we can complete that pattern. So I'm just gonna finish that all the way around. Okay, I've slip stitched to join. Now what I'm gonna do is just cut my white because we're all done with color A at this point. So we can just snip that off. And now I'm gonna work around just of my color B in the back loop only. So we're not dropping down anymore. I'm just finishing off this edge. So just single crochet around in the back loop only. Okay, so I'm gonna slip stitch to join. And at this point, you could completely finish your basket. It could be done, it looks adorable. But if you want to add sort of this organic natural element to the basket, which I really love, we're gonna bring in some twine. So let's just pull that through. We're gonna get this twine. Okay, so I've pulled the twine through where we've slip stitched here. You can see that, okay? So I've pulled it through. You can really just, whatever length you want. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut one of my colors and I'm going to pull that through because we're only going to use one strand now and why I'm just going to use the one is just because I think it allows you to see more of this than if we are doing double. Okay, so we're going to join back on, pull this through. Now we're gonna crochet over it as we go. So into the next stitch, let's do a single crochet. I'm gonna chain one, I'm gonna skip the next, and then still I'm just working in the back loop, so I'm gonna skip this one, and then I'm gonna work single crochet in the back loop. Chain one, skip, work a single crochet, chain one, and then we're just doing this all the way around. Of course, like I say, this is optional. I just like the look of it. And then you just have to make sure that that doesn't pull in too much as you go. So I'm gonna work that all the way around. Okay, so I've worked around. Again, you just wanna make sure the baskets Looking good, and I do have one final stitch, I think, here. So I'm gonna do that, and then I will slip stitch to join. We can cut this. All these ends will need to be woven in. And now we're going to cut this to be about the same length. And I've just been working right out of the center. So I'm going to measure this around just so you have an idea of how much length I've used. Okay, so I've used about 35 inches. So you have an estimate, and then I just like to do a nice knot finishing that off. You can leave your tails as they are, or you can brush them out like I did here. So it's really just up to you what you think. So this is our finished basket. If you really needed this to become a little bit smaller, you could use a smaller hook without changing the pattern. 
you could not do as many. So as you can see, this is gonna be a little bit big for this pot, a little bit tall, but I think it still works. You can see that there. But you don't have to specifically use it to cover one of your pots. You can just use it as a basket as well.